Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to incorporate sounds into your Microsoft Access database based on certain events. So in my folder here, I have a few different sound files. All of them are WAV files. Now the WAV format is simple, uncompressed, and it's been historically supported by Windows and Windows applications for a long time. Of course, there's workarounds for formats like MP3s, OGG, stuff like that. But I like to just keep things simple. So we're going to work with WAV. Now, if you have a different format and you want to convert to WAV format, I highly recommend Adobe's free AI podcast tool. Not only does it convert to WAV format, but it also enhances the sound and gets rid of things like echoing, background noise, and poor audio quality if you don't have a good microphone. It's pretty awesome. All right, let's go back to our form and open in design view. Now we're going to create a module to make it easy to play specific audio files. So go to create, then module, and then you're going to see the VBA code screen. All right, the first part of the code is a little tedious, but don't worry, I'll provide a link to the code in the video description. But let's start with the declare function. This is used to declare a function that exists in an external DLL, which is a dynamic link library. In this case, we're gonna use the Windows Multimedia API. So that's located in the winmm.dll library, and that's what we're gonna reference. Okay, so the alias S N D play sound A, that's just an alias name for the function. It's pretty self-explanatory. Now we can talk about these parameters right here. So by val LP SZ sound name as string, that's just the path of the WAV file to play. By val just means the argument is passed by a value. And then there's the other one with the U flags, and that's just a flag to help instruct how the sound is played. So for example, if we get a value of one, which we want, it's gonna play the sound asynchronously, which means the function will return immediately and the sound will play in the background. So that's what we want. All right, let's go ahead and add in our public function here so we can make it really easy to reference the location of our sound file. All right, so let's put in our first subroutine with our first sound file, which is just a simple clip of welcome. Uh, you'll probably recognize it if you hear it. So let's say we want people to hear welcome when the main menu form opens or something like that. So much of what we're doing here is just putting the file location of the sound file in our subroutine and then we'll call the subroutine when the form opens. It's pretty simple once you get to this point. Go ahead and type or paste in the directory and the location of the sound file. Mine is welcome.wave. Okay, now go ahead and copy the play wave file underscore clip one part. That's going to be the subroutine that we're going to reference. So to do this, we want to open our form in design view, then go to properties, onload, for when the form loads, go to Code Builder. And now it's easy. We just throw in our subroutine reference, which is just play wave file underscore clip one. So go ahead and paste it or type it in, whatever you want to do. And let's just run it to see if it works. Welcome. And there we go. It works. Perfect. All right, let's try something different here. Let's try it when you click a button just to get the code to work. When I go back to our code window here, we can just go ahead and copy this and paste it. And let's just switch everything to two, basically. And we want to change the directory of the sound file. And so we're going to change welcome to retro one, basically. Okay, we want to make sure that clip two, not clip one. So we're good there. And yeah, so let's give this a try. Let's copy that. Let's put it into a button. So let's get a button from going there in form design. We just change this to play, whatever you want to call it. It's fine. We're just demonstrating here. Go to properties, event on click. So when you click the button, it'll do something. Go to code builder and let's just throw it in there. We can paste it or you can type it in. It's fine. So now when we click the button, we should get a sound. So let's give it a try. There we go, it worked. All right, let's try one more. So I have this Cantina sound clip right here, and what I want to happen is when somebody clicks a certain value in a combo box or a field, it's gonna trigger. When I go back to our code window here, okay, so I wanna go ahead and, again, I just wanna copy this, I wanna make number three. Pretty self-explanatory by this point, but you kinda get it. So change that to three, change clip to three, and change that to Cantina. Okay, let's just copy this. Just makes it quicker and easier. Okay, so position here. There's a few different values, but when somebody clicks on investigator, it's gonna go ahead and trigger that sound. All right, so we need to make an if statement here for that. So if 
me dot position. That's the employee's position name. So an investigator could be a project manager and so on, but we're going to do investigator and see if it works. After then, we go ahead and put it in there. We just go ahead and paste it in and let's give it a try. So click on research assistant and it didn't work. That's expected. Now let's try investigator. There we go. It worked. Try it again and a different one. It works. You can do much more complex mechanisms here if you want to, but I just want to show a basic tutorial for how to do this. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know what you thought. And in the meantime, thanks for watching and subscribing and take care, everyone.